Hello, church. Welcome to our Sunday sermon as we are in our coronavirus shutdown uh, week three. Uh, you know, we got a lot going on here, and, um, and I just need to make a couple quick announcements. As you know, we have, um, in our typical church service, we have had uh, communion and then a song, and then I would go right into the um, sermon without any announcements. Uh, we were liking that. I'm liking that uh, because it's a good flow. I say that to say this, I gotta make some announcements here. And um, we have our online Bible study, small group study there. If you're not picking it up, look on Facebook. Uh, there's a lot uh, to be said about it. And we're gonna plan, what we're planning on doing is is using Zoom, and that's a, uh, that's a app, I guess you would call it, where people can come in to, into a meeting. You don't have to leave your home. Everything's done right on the computer, and it'll be a small group setting and to be interactive and a Bible study. I encourage you to check it out and uh, schedule yourself. You'll see it'll walk you right through how to schedule, how to uh, connect to the meeting. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay to download anything, um, but you, you'll be part of this group here. So we have several uh, meetings scheduled throughout the next couple weeks, and we're planning on launching it here um, possibly tomorrow at this point. So um, also I need to say that we are on Facebook. Many people know that, but a lot of people don't know we're on YouTube as well. So we can, um, if you don't have Facebook, you can go to YouTube. You can also uh, get the, um, the sermons and these announcements. We're posting them on the church's website as well. So I say this to, to you to tell your friends and family because we're finding out more and more people they may have their computer but they don't have uh, Facebook and they're not getting the sermons and things like that so they can get the sermons obviously on Facebook and get them on YouTube or on the church website so if you can pass it on and one more quick announcement as we have the past two Sundays we will have communion following the sermon here so if you can if you we'd love for you to join in with this, it's a special time. Get yourself some crackers or a piece of bread and some type of juice, and then we'll all partake together. Amen. Okay, so we're we're uh, we're all fighting this coronavirus uh, deal here, and it's affecting everybody. It's, it's affecting pretty much the whole world. And I just want to say, I don't believe this is this is not what you would call a judgment from God. Um, I think we would know if it was a judgment from God. Uh, nor is the virus from God as well. God is good and the devil's bad. So, so right from the pits of hell, these sickness and diseases come from. So it's important that we, uh, we kind of know that as Christians, that God is not trying to punish us or anything like that because this is not from God. It's not what you would call a judgment or anything like that. But I'll say this, that um, as Christians, we, we got to live through it. We're not pulled out of it. And as we're going through this, we're going to see, and hopefully you'll see here in Psalm 91, how God has provided protection for each and every one of us. I thank the Lord, even though, uh, you know, it's a struggle for everybody. Uh, it's been a, uh, it's been an expansion for the church. I'm in church right now, uh, video in this and, um, it's, it's empty <laughs> and it's kind of different, but just even today, I've been realizing that we are taking the church outside the walls of this building here with so much, um, uh, media, um, social media, uh, tech streaming video. And we got a lot going on. Even in this coming week, you'll see some more stuff that we're just putting out there. And I'm hoping some of this stuff will continue to go and grow even when we come back to meet together. But, uh, but we're doing good. Everybody's doing good. And um, we got a lot to be thankful for. I, I talk with, you know, our friends in different countries and Sammy, for one, talking with him. And he is saying they are on shutdown. They got a 21 day shutdown. And um, I talk with Raul. Some of you may know Raul, Raul in the Philippines right now. And they are on shutdown as well. Raul says they can shop between, I think it's 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. once a week for their groceries and there's not much on the shelves but everybody's got to stay in and um, and they are actually being uh, guarded 
that, you know, with the p police, the enforcements there, that they can't be out roaming around. So we don't have it all that bad, and we got to be thankful for what we have, but we also got to be praying for our brothers and sisters around the globe, including the Philippines and, and Sammy and Grace as well. We know where they're at. And um, so so as I go through this, there's some things I'm sharing, some of my thoughts, and but we're going to see a whole lot of scripture, and hopefully we'll believe uh, will believe the word of God in a new way. I believe right now we're going through uh, a, a time in, the, in this world that it's really a supernatural moment, a supernatural season that's taken place and it's making so many opportunities for the church. And I don't mean the building. I mean the, the people made Jesus Christ Lord of their lives, which I hope you have made Jesus your Savior. You invited him into your heart. Man, this is a time, this is, a, like I said, a spiritual season that, man, we got to seize. You know, I've been listening to so many different sermons and preachings and, and things this past week, like I think a lot of people have. I got so many, like, little quotes and things from different people. I'm not even sure where they came from. But one thing is, is interesting is, as the the world continues to get darker, you know, as a church, we are getting brighter and I hope we're getting brighter. We're, you know, we're bringing the light into a dark area. So the opportunity spiritually is just, is incredible. And we got to be looking at it that way. So whatever is going on in the world right now, it is so nice to know that God in his word has given us comfort given us peace, given us encouragement, and just given us all the, the, the things for life. And I'm grateful for the word of God. I'm thankful for what God has done for uh, each and every one of us in giving us this word. But many of us right now, we need encouragement. A lot of people need encouragement. Christian or non-Christian. I said this before last week, I'm gonna say it again. There's many Christians right now that are living in fear. What's next? I don't know what's going on. I need to get my supplies. They're, they're looking so far advanced that they're, they're living in fear. And it shouldn't be that way. It, it needs to be a, a time of, of trusting in the Lord. See, the world is fearing. My sister Rachel told me a story just, just the other day. She was at a grocery store and there was a young mom, very young with a young child. And she said that the, the mom was just shaking. And, and, and my sister was saying, what, what's going on? She went over and talked to the girl. What's the matter? And the girl was just fearful of what has taken place. Now, this is the way the world behaves. But us as Christians, we got we to gotta bring the light into these areas. We got to bring the comfort and give the opportunity for people to hear the word of God. Amen. Well, my topic today is speak protection. Now, what do I mean by that? You're going to see it here in the verse that we get to in verse two, but there's a lot that this, this whole chapter says, and there's, it's just a list of one thing after another that God wants to do for each and every one of us. So what I want to do right now, I'm going to read Psalm 91 in its entirety. If you have your Bible, read it along with me as well. But I'm going to kind of maybe emphasize a word or two as we go through, because I think it's so important that we learn from the word of God. You know, I'm saying different things in between scriptures, but it's really the word of God that is what we, what we uh, grow in and grow with. And, and, and I mean our faith. So let me start out Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side, but it shall not come near you. 
Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your, near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, as I said, there's a whole lot there. There's a whole lot of promises going on. And you can almost put this verse right into the season that we're in right now with this coronavirus. You know, I don't, I, I, again, I'll say this. I don't believe that uh, God has not put this on us. It's from the devil. But what the devil meant for evil, God's turning around. And, he's, and we're going to see so much good that comes out of it. I've been praying for unity in peoples, in families, in, in, in politics, in countries, and things like that. Now, that seems far-fetched because we got all this social distancing and all this kind of stuff, but I, that's what I'm praying for. But the point I'm saying is what's, what we're going through right now, the devil met for evil, God, God can turn this thing around, and I think he's going to use this, uh, and he's going to use each and every one of us. So let me backtrack a little bit. I want to just do a little bit of reviewing in Psalm 9. 1, 1, 90, 91 verse 1. And we used this last week. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Most High, the Almighty. The Almighty. It's saying nobody higher, nobody stronger. But the key point that we're saying here, he who dwells in these areas. Now, this is the promise for the Christian, the full-time Christian Who's, who, who dwells in the presence of God all the time. It's not talking about the Christian that dwells in the presence of God on Sunday morning or once in a while at home. It's something who dwell, someone who dwells, someone who makes resonance, that's what that means, that makes resonance with the Lord. See, there's a difference there. I heard someone say the other day, there's many unbelieving believers out there. Now, that sounds a little backwards here, but it, it, it's a strong point. Many unbelieving believers out there. See, here's, what, here's the point that's being made. Yeah, there's believers. These people are going to heaven. They love Jesus. They read their Bible. Um, they witness. They share whatever it may be. But they're unbelieving in certain things, like these, these promises that God has. We'll see this in a minute here, but this unbelieving believer, he's, they're the ones that you know what they are by what comes out of their mouth. Many people begin to start talking, and, and you know right away. So it brings me to the next point of, I will say, in chapter 2, uh, verse 2, I'm sorry, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. Okay, uh, a clear declaration. He's saying, I will say, I will say. I think this is such a, a key point here because we're seeing actually in verse one and verse two, for all these promises that God has, his protection, all, there's some qualifications. The first one is we got to dwell in the presence of God. And the next one we're seeing is I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. You know, it's, it's more than just speaking it, but you're believing it at that point because you're dwelling in there. Now, let me say this. Why is this so important? Why is what we say so important? Well, we see in James 3, it talks about the tongue, and it uses the example of a small rudder on a large ship, 
steering it in a fierce winds. So it's telling you what it's really important in the words that we say. Now, through many areas in the Bible, many scriptures, we will see the importance. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. We see all these different things about how we need to be speaking. And, uh, you know, one person said this. I heard this uh, yesterday, I think it was. Faith comes by hearing. Now, we know faith comes by hearing. We know that that's scriptural, but so does unbelief. Unbelief comes by hearing as well. So let me just break this down just a little bit here. What has taken place with this faith comes by hearing and so does unbelief? You will hear many, I'll say this, unbelieving Christians, they will be talking in an unbeliever way. Did you see what the news said today? They're on the phone or they're whatever they're doing. They're contacting their friends. What the president just said, you know how many, you know, the, the, the toll now, death toll's gone up this. We knew, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, you have these unbelieving Christians that are really speaking uh, death. They're, they're almost throwing out poison, if you will. And they're speaking that to the non-Christian as well as to the Christian instead of having that faith that should come out of your mouth, not this stuff. Did you just hear about this? You see what this is going on? We don't know what's taking place. Now, I'll say this, and I said this last week. It's important that we know what's going on. Don't get me wrong. It's important to, to do the proper procedures. It's important to do what, what, what the law was telling us with the social distancing and, you know, even closing down the church as much as that's a, that's a faith step for all of us. But there's a, there's a whole lot to say, yeah, we need to be, we need to uh, adhere to some of this stuff. We need to do our part, you know, it's like a teamwork to, to uh, stop the spread of this thing. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying as a Christian, we need to be speaking faith-filled words, not doing stupid things because, you know, God doesn't, God doesn't bless that kind of stuff, but just doing, being wise, but speaking words of faith. You know, sometimes we as Christians, we can get wrapped up into listening or watching so much news. And what are you putting in there? There's nothing positive coming out of the news. I think we all know that. So our words, our belief begins to reflect what we believe, what we're, what we're hearing, it's getting into our spirit, it's getting into our heart, and then we're beginning to speak it, and we're living a fearful life. And God says, this is not the plan here. We'll see that in some scriptures here. But it's not the plan for the Christian to be acting like an unbeliever, a, a, a person that doesn't have faith. So um, I think this was Max Ocato I heard say, feed your faith so your fears will starve. Feed your faith so your fears will starve. I mean, that's a good point right there. That's why we got to always, uh, you know, counteract the word, uh, the world with the word of God. We got to be filling up with more of the word than the world. You know, if we're listening to, you know, 15 minutes of the news, we need to be, you know, in the word of God, probably, you know, half an hour or more, whatever it may be. But we're feeding something. So he says, feed your faith so your fears will starve. Or your feet and your fears and your faith will starve. See what happens there? So if you're feeding your, your fears, you're continuing. The first thing you do, you get online, you see what's taking place in the morning. You see what the news is saying. You're watching the news a couple hours a day and all this. What are you feeding? You're not feeding your spirit. You're not feeding your faith. You know, if you're reading the word of God, you're feeding your faith. And you know what? The faith will overpower the fears that we have. We got to believe the word of God. We see in scripture it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Do you believe that? Do you live by it? Do you speak it? Or is it just a, a great Bible verse that's used for someone else at another time? But the Bible says, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is for the person who dwells in the secret place of the Lord. See, this is a key point. We got to continue to go back to he who dwells. My prayer is this, that we would say in our prayer time that no germ, no virus will touch my body and live. Make that part of your, uh, how you pray, you know, pray that, speak that out loud, that nothing is going to, is going to affect me. This virus is not going to affect me. I'm protected because I'm dwelling in the presence of the Lord. And I'm saying that God is my protection. He's my shield. 
That's a good prayer there. Speak this psalm. And I know I said this as well. Speak this psalm out loud every day. It's only 16 verses. And I'm telling you, each day you'll get something new. You'll get something fresh out of each uh, reading of it because it is so rich. And even as I study for it, I'm seeing things that I'm saying, well, I, I can't be going too fast here. <laughs> you know, I need, to, I need to dissect this. And each verse, I'm telling you, you can spend many sermons on each one here. So we look at the word of God. We go back to what, uh, what it says, I will say, the scripture says, and we see the importance of words. In Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus says, For sure, uh, surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he said will be done, he will have whatever he says. So it's interesting here because you're seeing this, this word says or say, Jesus says this and he tells us to say to the mountain, say to the mountain, speak to the problem. Get that? That's, a, that's an important verse there because many times we're going to God and we're saying, God, give me this. God, give me that. I need help through this. God is saying, speak to the problem. You know, I don't want to say don't speak to God, but speak to the problem. And we see it here in scripture. Another person used this terminology is faith is voice activated. It's voice activated. Just listen to a person for a few moments and you'll see where their faith is. And you'll see, you know, if you know a little bit about the person's life, you can see that they're not activating any faith in their life. Maybe they don't have faith. Maybe they talk a good talk, but maybe they don't have the faith that we should have as Christians from the word of God. Again, many Christians they, they activate their fear. And you can just tell sometimes it's just on their face. Sometimes it's, it comes out in, in 30 seconds of the words they say or whatever message they're putting out there. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of messages myself. I'm, I'm more on Facebook now than I have been in, in probably two years because we're putting so much out there as well. But, you know, I, w I, I pray that you, you use your faith and let your faith grow and make it grow. It's up to you and begin to speak it. Stop when, stop when you feel like you got a negative, unfaithful word coming out. You can say, well, Dom, that's true. It's a true statement. Yeah, it is true. You know, there's a lot of things that are true, but we don't need to keep bringing it up. We don't need to keep putting our focus in on it. Put the focus in that God loves you, and, and we're seeing these verses. He's out to protect us, but he wants us to dwell in his presence. He wants us to speak godly words and faith-filled words. And I say this again, if you're around an environment, someone who doesn't have faith-filled words, who's constantly bringing you up to date on the news or whatever it may be, maybe it's time to just part for a little while to get through this season here because we all need to be have encouragers speak into our lives, not discouragers. Amen. So, <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. <clears throat> so Proverbs 18 says this, death and life, death, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, why I say that? Because there is, there is something important about the words we speak and how God says, this is how important it is. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now let's hit verse three, because we're going to, um, we're just going to verse three. And it says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Now he's saying, surely, okay, starting out right there, surely. It's like, there's no doubt here. He's going to, he's going to deliver us from these things. And so we start out this verse of a positive thing, like, you know, God's going to protect us from this. But what is the snare? What is the fowler? The snare is a bird trap. That's what it is. And the fowler is the trapper, is the person who sets the trap. Now, that's clearly talking about the devil. That's his plan. You know, we know in John 10:10, 10, 10, the, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Sounds like the virus to me, without a doubt. Sounds like germs and everything else. But it's, it's God's protecting us. He says, surely, for sure, of course, he shall deliver us from the, the traps of the devil, you know, uh, many years ago, there was a um, there was a, a comedian out there, and he his thing that made made him famous was he would say, "The devil made me do it." Well, you know, the devil sets the trap, and we walk into it. Uh, many times we blame the devil, but he's just setting the trap, and we 
we step into it. And the trap could be, you know, videos, could be TV shows, it could be uh, enjoying life, you know, all these type of self-gratifications. It takes you from one step to the next. But the point really is, is he's putting these traps out there. It's the devil who puts these traps out there. Now, when we see here in, in, these, um, in, these, in this verse 3, perilous, it says, and, and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous, if I'm saying that right, I'm probably not, but it means exposed to disaster or ruin. Pestilence means a fatal epidemic or disease a plague. These, this word pestilent is what you would see in Exodus. It's the same word when, um, when uh, Moses was bringing the uh, Israelites out of Egypt, out of uh, slavery. The pestilence were, were, is that word. So we see these things that God is saying, you know, it's the thief that comes and does this stuff, but the pestilence, if you will, he is going to deliver us from it. It's him that delivered the Israelites from the pestilence of, of Pharaoh and, and that whole area there. That's a whole nother doctrine and theology there. I don't want to get off base there, base there. But the point really is, is I'll say it again. Surely, of course, he's delivered you from the snare. He's delivered you from the trap of the devil and from the, and from the uh, plagues, if you will. So we look at these words and we got to understand God is speaking to us. Now, we're continuing to throw out videos and things like that, but you'll always hear scripture from us. Now, in Hebrews 2.1, it says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. This word is for each and every one of us. We have to stay focused in on God. We have to stay focused. It's, the only one that can do that is you. You're the only one that can, that can uh, earnestly heed the things that you have heard from the word of God. So you live by it. If not, you're going to drift away and the cares of this world is going to continue to pull you away further and further. So I want to go through a couple of scriptures here. John 16, 33, Jesus says this, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God is, God is saying, look, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, it's not going to be smooth sailing in life. We're going to have things that we're going to go through. Even this, even this thing here, as we're going through uh, this coronavirus situation, and if we're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, God is saying there's still things out there. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Now, you believe it or you don't believe it. Jesus says that in me, you may have peace. Do we have peace or are we, are we stirred up? Are we keeping awake at nights? Are we, are we um, you know, following the news and, you know, just scattered and trying to figure everything out? I don't think we can figure this situation out, not anytime soon. And, uh, but we know what? God gives us peace. Amen. Jesus says this, he prays to the Father in John 17, verse 14, he says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. See, Christians, this is, this is a whole lot here in this one verse, but you know, as a Christian, um, we, get a, we get a lot of opposition from everybody. As a matter of fact, the world doesn't even like, like us, according to this scripture. Verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. This is, this is Jesus interceding for us. This is his prayer. We were not going to escape this, these things, but he's going to keep us from the evil one. He's going to keep us from going through certain situations. But I look at chapter 91, the Psalm here, that God is wanting us to focus in on his direction, his plan for our lives. Not what the world is saying, but what he is saying. And this is, this is why we always kind of go back to the word of God. I don't want to say that we default the word of God, but this is something that we, um, that we continue to, um, to uh, make sure that we're going back to the word of God. So at this time, I want to do communion.
Now we talked about that having it earlier. And um, if you have the elements, if you have cracker or juice, uh, please join in with me. Uh, this is a special time uh, for the church and for us right now, as as we are the church, but we're not we're not in the church. Um, but it's a time for us to kind of unite and join together in uh, in uh, communion. So um, if you can just take a few moments and just go to God it's between you and God now and ask God to, to uh, you know, forgive your sins, examine your heart, all that kind of stuff. Maybe some things you need to get right with God. So take this a uh, couple seconds here and then we'll get into the communion. First Corinthians Verse 11, 23, it says this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, also, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You announces that you're not ashamed of it. You're you're waiting for the the resurrection of uh, of uh, when well when the Lord comes back and and we know we're going to heaven. So the blood is the sacrifice that God gave for us to receive Him, and uh, we thank the Lord for the cross. We thank the Lord for the shed blood. We thank the Lord for the resurrection. Amen. Well, I just want to uh, close with uh, just a couple of thoughts here and then a prayer and then some verses. Uh, I just want to say, you know, be strong in the Lord. God's got your back. He loves you. He cares for you. Don't get scrambled in, uh, in your thoughts with what's being posted on Facebook and all these other things. There's a lot of good stuff I'm seeing on Facebook. There's a lot of bad stuff as well. So we got to stay focused in on the good stuff. You know, be a, a good witness, how you speak, how you share with other people. But make sure that you're continuing to grow closer and closer to God. Just uh, absorb as much as you can from the things of the Lord. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for each person that's viewing this video right now. Lord, I pray blessings and I pray protection to be upon them and their families. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us just continue to get more hungry for you, Father. Father, that we take this Psalm 91, we take it to heart. We see how you provide a protection, even through plagues, Lord, even through storms. Lord, you protected us through these things, Lord, and I thank you for it. Father, bless your church, Perry. Hall Family Worship Center. Continue to expand our territory, expand our borders here, Lord. Father, I thank you for it. I pray for our friends in India. I pray for our friends in the Philippines and so many other countries of the world, Lord, that, that we are connected with. We thank you for them. We pray blessings and protection to be upon them. Bless them. Bless their families. I pray great favor to be upon us, Lord, that we don't have any shortage. Lord, we have plenty, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Now, let me just close with a couple verses here. Uh, let these verses be encouragement to you. Isaiah 41.10, the word of God says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle, eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
Exodus 15, the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. Ephesians 6.10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. God bless you. I'm praying for you. And thank you so much for tuning in.